Hello everyone, this is part 9 on how to make a racing game in Scratch, and this is the final video of this entire series. In this video, I will be making some minor changes to the game, and add a menu screen, and I will also do a run-through of the game near the end of the video. If you haven't checked out parts 1-8 through eight yet, check them out, links are in the description below. Anyways, let's get started. So first off, I want to make some small improvements to my uh, lap timer numbers, because right now, they're a bit too large, I think, and a bit too close together. So I'll show you what I mean. So this is the first lap timer, and I'm going to complete one more lap to show two lap timers on the right side over there. And OK, so as you can see, um, they're slightly too close together, I think, and I want to make them slightly smaller than the main timer. So let's fix that. In our individual lap timer sprite, let's um, look over here. And um, I am going to uh, play around and change some numbers. So let's see. First off, I want to make the numbers a bit smaller. So I'm going to go to looks and then drag a set size to 80%. And I'm going to put this under the one flag clicked. OK. And over here in the go to XY, since the size of the numbers are a bit smaller, we have to decrease the spacing between each number. So I'm going to make this times 10. So now there's only 10 pixels of spacing between each number. And I think I'm going to leave the spacing in the Y position the same, because earlier, as I said, the numbers were a bit too close together. But now since they're smaller, they should be further apart vertically. So I think that's fine. and. I might want to change this to a smaller number, like 235. That's to account for the spacing. And by the way, it's OK if you're a bit confused on how all of these numbers work, because mostly I'm just playing around with the numbers and testing to see what works. So this might not work perfectly the first time. But anyways, um, I'm going to also change this to uh, 10, because this number is the same as this number. So um, OK, so I think I should actually create a variable since these use the same number. So it might be more clear to just use a variable. So I'm going to go to variables and then create a variable. And I'm going to call this um, number spacing. OK, I'm going to actually add a single lap number spacing, I guess. OK, and then I'm going to click OK. And when the flag is clicked, I'm just going to set single lap number spacing to 10. And that's pretty much the spacing between each digit in the single lap timers. So I'm going to drag this inside of here to replace the 10. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. All right. And now I think the lap timers should look a bit better. So I'm going to try it out and complete two laps. And all right, so I finished two of the laps. And as you can see, the uh, single lap timers are smaller than the main timer, and they're properly spaced. So I think that's pretty good. And yeah. So now that I'm done fixing the individual lap timers, I want to add a menu screen. Because right now, when I click the green flag, it just starts the game. But I sort of want a title and a start button. So to do that, let's create a new sprite. And I'm just going to create a title. All right, so I finished my title, and I'm going to go back to the code. And then I am going to move this to the top of the screen. So when the flag is clicked, I'm going to position it somewhere over here. Um, let's see. I think right here is fine. OK, so that's 0, 105. And then I'm also going to go to looks and then drag a show. Now that we have our title, I'm going to also create a start button. So I'm going to create a new sprite, and then draw a start button. All right. 
right, so I finished my start button, and now I'm going to go back to the code. And I'm going to also drag a win flag clicked, and then show. And I'm going to also move it somewhere over here. So that's around X position. I'm going to change this to 0. And Y position, negative 99. All right, and now we have our button. So I'm planning on having the menu uh, show the car and the racetrack like this with the title and start button and then hide everything else. But anyways, let's make the button actually work. So first of all, let's go to control and then drag a forever loop. And then I'm going to drag an if else. And I'm going to go to sensing and check if touching the mouse pointer. Then I'm going to go to looks. And then I'm going to set the ghost effect to something like 30. So what that does is that the button checks if it's touching the mouse pointer, and if it does, then it becomes partially transparent, as you can see over here. And you can increase or decrease this number to make it more see-through or less see-through. But anyways, I'm going to keep it at 30. And then inside of the else, I want to uh, clear graphic effects. Or actually, I'm going to set the ghost effect to 0. So that makes the button uh, not see-through at all, like this. So now if you try it, if it's touching the mouse pointer, then it becomes partially see-through, else if it's not, then it goes back to normal. And now inside of the if touching mouse pointer, we want to check if the mouse is down, and then start the game. So inside of control, let's drag an if, and inside of sensing, let's check if mouse down. Then, um, let's see, so inside of our stage, when the flag is clicked, it broadcasts restart. And that pretty much just starts the game. So inside of our stage, I'm going to take out the broadcast restart like this. And then in our start button, I am going to go to events and broadcast restart when the mouse is down. So that pretty much just starts the game. And I'm going to drag this inside of the if touching mouse pointer. And I'm also going to go to control and stop this script after it broadcasts restart. Otherwise, if we click the button, we would be able to click it again even if the game started. So now once we click the button, the game should be able to start. And um, oh yeah, we also want to hide the button once the game actually starts. So instead of events, I'm going to drag a when I receive restart. So once the game starts, then I'm going to go to looks and hide. All right. And I'm going to also do the same thing for the title. I'm just going to go to the title sprite. And then I'm going to go to events, drag a win and receive, restart, then go to looks and hide. All right. And now, since we disconnected the broadcast restart when flag is clicked, the game does not start when we click the green flag. However, if we click the button, then the button and the title both disappear and the game starts. All right. Awesome. Um, but one thing I noticed is that if we uh, stop the game and then restart it, then the timer still shows up. So we want to hide the timer when the uh, menu is shown. So let's go to our timer sprite. And make sure it's the main timer, not the uh, individual lap timer. So go to our main timer sprite. And then let's see. Hmm. Okay, so let's drag um, this if else statement inside of the if current game state is equal to racing. So I'm going to take this out and then take this one out and drag this back in. And I'm going to drag this if else inside of here. So that means that the timer only shows and does this stuff once the race actually started. And now let's try it out. And OK, so it seems like the timer is still there. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, so in our stage, we want to set the current game state to starting race when the flag is clicked, not uh, under when it receives restart, because this happens once the game actually begins. So I'm going to actually drag all of these set variables inside of the when flag clicked, and I'm going to drag this broadcast new lap back under the when it receives restart. All right. And now that we have that, let's try it again. And all right, cool. 
So the timer seemed to disappear, and the racetrack actually seemed to go back to its original position. So now we have our menu like this, and um, I noticed that the car is not reset to its original rotation. So let's go to our car sprite, and let's see. I think I'm just going to duplicate this, and then just reset the direction and position of the car when the flag is clicked. And I think that should be fine. So let's try it out. Okay, so as you can see, the car reset. So now it's facing forward, and the track and timer and everything is fine. So now once we actually click the start button, the race starts like normal. And I'm pretty sure everything works as planned. All right, cool. So I'm going to complete, uh, let's say, three laps and see how it goes. Alright, and everything seems to work fine, including the restart. So it seems like that did not work, actually. Um, oh yeah, in this stage, we have to make sure to actually keep all of these set variables under the win and receive restart. Um, now this should be fine. So we have to uh, set all these variables both when the flag is clicked and when it receives restart. Because once we restart the game, we want it to reset the variables too. So I think that should be okay. Oh yeah, one more thing is that we have to make sure to hide our stoplight when the flag is clicked. So let's just go to um, events and then under when flag clicked, let's just hide the stoplight. Let's also drag a show under the when and receive restart, since we hid the stoplight when the flag was clicked. And now that should be okay. All right, so we have our menu, and then once we click start, then the race starts. And now I'm gonna try this again. All right, so we finished. And now let's try restarting. And all right, cool. So it seems like the game restarts uh, fine and we can keep playing. And now I'm going to try stopping the game and then clicking the green flag again. And all right, everything seems to work. Like so. Okay, cool. And now that we're done, I'm going to do a quick playthrough of the game as a completed product. So I'm going to play it on the project page. And by the way, I have shared this project on my Scratch profile. So if you want to check it out, then link is in the description below. But anyways, I'm going to start the game. And over here, as you can see, this is the menu. So I'm going to click Start and begin the game. So I'm on my first lap. Okay. Each lap takes around like 30 seconds, I think. So, um, okay, almost there. And lap number one completed. As you can see, the first lap took 31 seconds. So I'm going to try to beat that. Lap two, almost there. Oh, okay. Got on the grass, so my car got a bit slower. But let's see if I can beat my lap one time. And okay. So it was faster by about one third of a second. I'm going to try to be even faster on the third lap. So. Almost there. All right. No grass this time, so. And cool. My third lap was faster than the other two laps, and my combined time for all three laps 
was 93 seconds. And now if I want to play again, I can just click to continue and then the game restarts. All right, cool. And that's a quick run through of the finished game. Anyways, that's it for this video and this entire series. If you enjoyed the series, then give this video a thumbs up and subscribe too, if you haven't already. Again, this project is shared on my Scratch profile, so if you want to check it out, link is in the description below. Anyways, that's for this video. See ya!